gostaríamos de convidar ao palco o senhor Biljami Liitikainen, da Universidade de Aalto, da Finlândia, que fará uma apresentação sobre a rede Design Factory. Informamos que esta apresentação será em inglês. Agradecemos também a presença da senhora Paiven Oinonen, também da Universidade de Aalto. Okay. Dear students, Vice Rector Bernucci, uh, representative from the Friends of Poly, Alumni Foundation, Ambassador Pirri, authorities, colleagues, friends. It's a pleasure being here in the inauguration of the Design Factory Sao Paulo. I, together with my colleague Paivi, can you raise your hand? Yes. We represent all the Design Factory and the Design Factory Global Network. Okay. Congratulations to the first Design Factory in Brazil. Yay! <laughs> Applause. <laughs> the topic that was asked to present a little bit is what actually is a Design Factory? Well, to describe the goal and mission, that's very simple. Our goal and mission is to educate the world's best product developers. The concept originates from Finland. We are a country located in the northern part of Europe. The interesting fact to know, to understand the Finnish mentality, is that the whole population of Finland is 5.5 million people. But if, if you take the world population that lives on the yellow area, Above the 60th latitude, 40% of those people are Finns. <laughs> so not so many people, a lot of land. So we like our personal space. This is an authentic picture. Nothing has been staged. The personal space, it applies everywhere else than when in sauna. <laughs> that is where we are comfortable with, with being close to each other. Concerning education, what people might recognize Finland about is that we do well in PISA rankings. So we do well uh, all the way to the kind of university level. So PISA measures below that. Aalto, as a new university, we've been actually quite successful in some rankings as well. So in the alphabetical ranking of world universities, we are number two. <laughs> Only second to Aalborg. Well, some rankings we do really lousy in. I'm speaking about the FIFA football world <laughs> rankings. We compete closely with countries like El Salvador and Nicaragua. But that's a little bit about the background and the context. We come from Aalto University, which is a merger of the leading universities in their own field in Finland, technology, design and business. We represent all the design factory, which actually predated the university by two years. And it's something that is built around 20 years of experiences of running these interdisciplinary learning projects together with industrial partners. And the reason why, why do we have something like this? University education 650 years ago, how much has changed? Maybe not that much. Second thing, especially in academia, we love to work in silos. We also love to build silos between the university and the rest of the society. So that is something that we want to get rid of. So Design Factory serves as a platform that brings together different stakeholders. In Aalto, our focus is on product design and development. Design Factory is in the kind of pinnacle of education, research and industry uh, collaboration and partners. So we try to bring these stakeholders together. And how? Through different kinds of activities, courses, seminars, different kinds of experiments, study, research projects, uh, and different more informal activities. In practice what we have, so we have spaces that support 
hands-on and prototyping activities. We have spaces that support the creative process, the fuzzy front-end, ideation, teamworking, brainstorming. We have large spaces that, that provide the possibility to also then expose and, and, and share what has been done through seminars and such. We also have communal spaces, like our shared community kitchen. This is a picture from our weekly breakfast. Uh, once a week, open for, for anyone to exchange ideas and meet with people. We've also experimented with low-key technologies to increase the interaction. You can see the hugging point. You saw the picture in the beginning where we stand two meters from each other. So we do need something like this. Maybe not so much here in Brazil, but in Finland. We speak about interdisciplinarity a lot. And this is a sentence that especially politicians, they love to say. That new things come when you combine different disciplines. So in the middle. And that's very much true. But what is quite often left out is the fact that how is the reality? How is it as a student, as a professor, to work together with people from different disciplines? Quite often the reality is something like this. It's damn challenging. And that's something for us as teachers or professors to support the students in, in being able to go through processes like this. To change from a teacher more to a coach. Uh, another perspective to look into the kind of difficulty or, or complexity of, of these kind of processes is, is if you consider different approaches to learning. So you might have a problem-based learning course. If you want to add some complexity, you might want to require that students develop something tangible, a prototype. Add more complexity. So put a team that is interdisciplinary. So challenges in communication and, and such. Include an industry partner. So instead of having a case that is given by the professor or somewhere, give a real life challenge. Even more. So at international element. So split the team in different locations. Why this? So the only reason that we do anything in the design factory is better learning. So this is damn challenging, but this is the reality in, in the real life, in the working life. And that is the only reason why we put the students through something like this. <coughs> One example of how we do this. PDP is the course around which the design factory as a concept was built around since 1997. Some facts and figures. Uh, the 20 universities means universities that have been taking part into the course. One of them is, is USP, and actually one of the projects from this year, Portulikivi. So the students are here. Can you raise your hands? Okay. <clears throat> we didn't want to put that project here, so when we finish, go and talk and interact with them and also with the other, other students. So on this course, we work with industrial partners. Some you might recognize, larger established international companies, uh, but also others. This picture is from a year ago for the company called Kone, which is a Finnish elevator and escalator company. And the problem that they gave for the students was that the elevator doors and how they operate have remained the same for a hundred years. So they open to the sides, which means that there's a lot of space uh, not utilized because you need the space for the door to open. Well, what the new technologies make it possible is that you can create a door that bends to the side. So per elevator, you can actually s save space that seems small per one elevator but then when you take into consideration that it's a large skyscraper that might have several elevators, a hundred floors, so the actual cost saving starts to increase quite a lot. The guy on the left is actually Antti Herlin. He's the CEO of Kone. He's the wealthiest man in Finland. So he came to check the student prototype and actually spent half a day with us. Uh, we encourage experimenting. This is project done for Philips Medicare. Uh, 
where the task was to uh, find ways to keep patients still during x-ray treatment. And what the students are now developing and experimenting is a really quick approach to testing of using vacuum principle to suck the air out to keep the patient steady. And these are the things that make the life of any professor interesting when you need to explain to the financial department that why did the students go to a sex shop to buy the latex sheet <laughs> for this kind of approach. <coughs> Testing. Uh, this is our Welcome to Finland picture from April. So this kind of international learning on this kind of project, it's, it's also very much about learning and adjusting to different cultures. We have some priorities. One of them is that at the design factory, the students always come first. What that means in practice is that if we have the president of Switzerland together with the president of Finland coming for a visit, it's the students who tell what they've been doing, not us. Or if the Finnish prime minister come, the same thing. The guy here, this is Perttu Karjalainen. He's the CEO of one of our startup partners. And what their company Entocube is doing is they're developing uh, or they're growing crickets and insects for food production to solve the uh, food and, and food producing challenge for the growing population. Uh, and just before this picture, uh, they asked the prime minister to taste those insects. The funny thing is that this is still illegal in Finland to sell insects for food production. But what the Prime Minister said that, okay, is it really so? So please send a notice to my assistant and let's see what we can do. So it's also about this mix of people that you might run into within the Design Factory platform. Okay, Sao Paulo, you are now joining the network. So maybe a few words about that. As a network, what do we stand for? So the network, from our perspective, is a shared understanding. How do you support innovation and creativity? It's about creating a new learning culture, opportunities for continuous experimentation, and it's all three of these, space, place, and the mindset to enable these serendipitous meetings between different people. We try to empower change agents, like I see many of them here in the room. We have a shared understanding, ways of working. Our goals are the same. So that makes the collaboration easier. And we want to share the best practices. However, it's not a paper that you sign. So it's something that is defined by the activities that the individual design factories do together. One concrete example that just took place recently, in the end of April, was Rack Relay, which was quite a unique three-day global hackathon across different design factories. The fuzzy picture there shows uh, how it actually went in practice. So we had six design factories involved. They all had a problem briefed uh, from a real stakeholder. For the first six hours, everybody worked on their own. And then you shipped it over to another design factory to do the next part, and so on and so on. After, six, uh, after five slots, for the last slot, number six, the briefs came back to where they started from. The idea was to simulate real life situation where it, it's quite rare that you, as a professional, are able to carry out a project from the very beginning until the end. So usually you need to be able to contribute to a certain part of the process. Really, really interesting. Uh, and maybe to conclude, we think we are a very enthusiastic Formula One nation as well. Uh, you've been already engaging in this kind of experimentation, interdisciplinary learning, interdisciplinary activities. With the network, what that now brings is the potential to collaborate across borders, provide really meaningful, challenging learning opportunities for the students. But keep this in mind. So this is a quote from a Finnish formula driver, Kimi Räikkönen. 
which I think applies very well to all kind of change uh, efforts. Whenever you think you have everything under control, you're not just driving fast enough. So keep that in mind. So drive and go forward so fast that you start to lose control a little bit. Thank you. Agradecemos também a presença da senhora Melissa Godoy, representando a Secretaria do Governo do Estado de São Paulo. Informamos que o senhor Guilherme e a senhora Paive estarão à disposição para apresentar detalhes sobre a Design Factory hoje, a partir das 14 horas, na sala FG 232 do Departamento de Engenharia de Produção da Escola Politécnica da Universidade de São Paulo. Exibiremos agora um vídeo de boas-vindas feito pelos integrantes internacionais da rede Design Factory. Welcome to Design Factory Global Network. Together we can make education fun again. Better learning, more passion and commitment, more hands-on and testing theory in practice. All you need is love, design, engineering and business. Sao Paulo, congratulations on your opening. We are from Design Factory Korea. We're actually um, at the other side of the world, but we just added you in our map hoping that in the near future we can connect um, our two different countries with fun projects. Welcome to DF family. Welcome to join the Global Design Factory Network. We hope to meet you in Shanghai. And congratulations. Congratulations. Hello from Philadelphia. Welcome to the Design Factory Network, Sao Paulo. We're looking forward to working with you. Design Factory in Sao Paulo, welcome to the family. We're thrilled to have another family member in the Americas. Hola amigos del Design Factory de Sao Paulo, bienvenidos a la familia, la red global de Design Factories. Más cercanos que tenemos hasta ahora, esperamos que podamos hacer muchas cosas en el futuro. Un abrazo para todos. Ok. Hi, this is Yulin and Steve from Gun Design Factory. We wish you very much luck with the opening of your new design factory. Congrats. So congratulations to USP, to the University of Sao Paulo for its brand new design factory and for becoming part of this wonderful network. <laughs> 